John Joe, let's take a trip down memory lane to Iris' gift's wonderful Stayers Hurdle victory back in 2004 and to the road leading up to that. He was always a horse full of, rock full of potential, wasn't he? From a very young age in the Williams, at an early stage. Um, just talk to us a little bit about his hurdling career, his novice hurdling career, and, and the kind of level that you thought he might eventually reach. Well, Bob Lester bought him. Bob was a coal man at the time, and uh, he was driving along in his wagon one day, and he seen this grey horse in the field, and he went in and bought the horse, because his mum was after passing away, and his mum was called Alice, so he, she left him a few quid, and he bought the horse, and the horse was called Alice's gift. And I was up north at the time, and um, I said, well, I'm going to be moving down. This was in 2001. I'm going to be moving down, you know. And um, Bob said, well, wherever you go, the horse is going with you, you know. I said, OK. So the horse come down anyway. And uh, we started getting going with him. And I thought, yeah, he's, he's not too bad, this fellow. You know, he gallops away and <coughs> does everything well. So we ended up taking him to Worcester in the summer there. And we ran him in a bumper. And Ben Hitchcock used to work with us then, and Ben was a small lad, and this horse was a big 16-2, 16-3 horse, like. And um, Ben got on really well with him, and he rode him in his first bumper, and he wins. So we're kind of delighted and surprised, we've done our job, he's ran and he's won, you know. So uh, then we started schooling him and popping away with him and so on. And he used to break poles, he'd break fences, he'd bust hulls. He was desperate. He just had no idea on how to jump. So we thought, oh, we maybe better give him another run on the bumper. So we give him another run on the bumper back at Worcester, and <coughs> he wins again. And he wins quite nicely. I thought, well, he's got an engine. We've got to get him jumping, you know? And we tried everything to get him jumping. And he was just bulldozing everything out. So we had to leave him then from, you know, that was probably September time, I think, as a rough guess when he la won his bumper. And then we waited until Newbury for a, a nice bumper. It was worth a few quid, a listed bumper, and we went there, and he wins very well again. But we were still all the time trying to get him jumping, and uh, he was desperate. Oh, I thought, we can't run him. We just kind of run him over holes like he killed somebody or kill himself. Anyway, so we didn't decide, well, we'll go for the Cheltenham bumper. And uh, we ran the Cheltenham bumper, and I think he finished about fifth or sixth. And then we went to Liverpool, we went to Liverpool, and then we went to Punchestown. So we went everywhere, and there was a bumper. And uh, he won again at Punchestown. And um, uh, so now we've a problem the following season. We've got to go jumping, you know. So we ran out of our race at the, and we kept schooling him and kept messing around with him all the time. And he got a little bit better. We were run over plastic balls and trying to make a noise. So he learned to lift his legs. We'd, everything we could think of, we were trying to get him going. And he eventually got him going. But he was never, the first season hurling, he was, he wa he was, I think he was costing the race courses a few quid to build the hulls back up afterwards. But he kept winning, you know, he was just a good horse. He had an engine and, and that was it. And um, then we obviously stepped up again and he had to go on for the, the good races and he was still doing his bits and still knocking the odd hull out. But he did get a bit better at it. And, um, you know, he went on and he ran a cracker in the first day of Hull. He ran in, finished second to Barracuda. And the uh, following season, he went on and beat Barracuda. So, you know, he was, he, he was just a, 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 an enigma. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he was the strangest horse I think I've ever seen. He's offset knees, his joints weren't all together. He, he, just, he was just a, a machine, really, you know and uh, got better and better as time as he got older as well, I suppose. And that's maybe how he got jumping a bit better, got a bit stronger. But um, he was an amazing horse, really. And uh, Bob, his owner and family there were amazing as well. They were, you know, everybody used to go racing. Then the whole village used to follow the horse everywhere he went. And 
they're great fun and great times, you know, and the times you never forget, really. That's what the game is all about, having fun, you know. And they had it from start to finish. It was just a fairy tale story, really. You just love to hear it, don't you? Yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I mean, you couldn't write it, you know. But, uh, yeah, he did us proud. He did us, put us on the map, so it was great. I'm a huge advocate generally for if you have a novice that's good enough to go for one of the big championship races just have a go because oh, you never go, know yeah. what's going to happen yeah exactly and you know we've seen the likes of Coney Gree and others in the past do the business in these big races and when I was looking back I remembered that Irish's gift went as a novice to the to the first day at Hurdle was that your decision or the owner or part of both of you because as you say earlier about his hurdling not being up to scratch what was the reason behind not going to a novice race the first time around? Um, I can't remember, to be <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> but Bob used to leave it up to us. You know, he, he, to be fair, he was a great man to train for. He never interfered with where we were running him or anything like that. And um, we just went with the flow, really. And we, it was a good feeling. Whatever we thought was right for the horse, we'd, we'd just go with him. And um, um, it worked out not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly did. He ran a fantastic race to finish second. Then obviously went to Aintree and won after that. There was a quite a long break in between runs then. He uh, ended up at Haydock running off top weight in a very competitive handicap and was beaten by another one of yours, Tardar. Uh, were you surprised he got beaten that day or was it the fact that he had soil off on the, on so long off the track almost expected? He, well, we were with two nice horses, obviously, you know, and then when you're up, that bracket, you don't have too many choices, really. So um, we didn't have to, um, we didn't have to, as I say, didn't have the choices. So the ball ran. But yeah, I would say because he was off for so long, he probably just needed, you know, when you're in that class of race, you need to be 100% really. And he probably just needed a bit. But he ran a cracker. Delighted yeah. with him. He certainly yeah. did. And then he ran another blinder, obviously, when winning the Stairs Hurdle itself, beating Barracuda. Were you really excited to take on that French horse once again, just to see what he could do? Yeah, we were. Barry rode him the first year, and he, f when he came in, he, he was annoyed with himself. He felt he should have won, you know, and uh, or he should have gone on on him um, more. Um, and I said, so there's always next year, we'll have another go, you know. And, and that's what happened. <laughs> uh, but Barry felt the first year he 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 thought he should have gone on on him, you know. But um, and he worked out next year, so it wasn't too bad. Horace's gift by a length and a half to Barracuda, jumped in really well. Horace's gift joined by Barracuda. Here comes Barracuda and Thierry Dumain, but he comes under pressure. And Horace's gift is fighting back. They battled now 12 months ago. Must have been some thrill when Barracuda came almost up sides and then Iris's gift just found oh, that a little bit more. Yeah, they were fantastic races. Like, that's what you get at Cheltenham, isn't it? You know, the, the two fantastic horses to draw away, like, you know, and um, every race at Cheltenham is magical. Like, I uh, heard Charlie the other night, Charlie Swan, I can't think of the name of the horse now, that he said the one that got away. It was the same thing. One of, um, I think it was Christy Rose trained it. Um, Paul Shanahan, and I can't think of never has now, but you know, they were just real special horses, like you know, and if you make that little blunder, you pay the penalty, like, and it's a matter of well, do I go this side or do I go that side or do I drive on a weight? And it's very easy to criticise afterwards, like, but give a split second to think and make that decision, and if you're wrong, well, you're a clown, and if you're right, you're a hero. And that's the way it works. That's life.